Hey guys, it's Julie from Julie's Designs. Today I'm going to be showing you how to paint fall pumpkins on wood like these here and the ones you see behind me. Using this technique, you'll be able to create your own pumpkin designs and also you can use this technique to try to paint other things, say like Christmas trees for Christmas or Christmas ornaments. Really anything big and without a lot of detail, you can use this method. So I'm going to show you this one up close. I, this one's my favorite, the tall one, because I feel like it's perfect for any space. Even if you're not going over the top decorating, you can definitely find a place to put this one. Like I just hung this one in my foyer right here. So hope y'all enjoy today's video and y'all learn new techniques. I already have my base ready to go and I'm just gonna tell y'all how I did it. I just cut, cut my fence board to 16 inches. This piece is 16 inches. And then I cut down two strips of fence board. And this is the bottom, this is the top. The top has two holes in it because I like the look now of having your picture in the middle and then how they put the wood at the top and the wood at the bottom and then hang it with a string uh, at the top. And also it keeps it clean on the back. What I did was I used my nail gun with two inch nails to keep these pieces in place. So that's my plan. I'm gonna hang it up with a string. This background's wood. This one I did and I did the opposite. I painted the background white and then put the wood top and bottom on. Now what I did was I painted it white and then I distressed it. And then it was a blank slate ready to have the pumpkins painted on. So you want to find some pumpkins online and you just print them out. It doesn't matter what they look like. You just need the shape to copy unless you want to freehand it. I don't like to freehand. I like to know exactly what it's going to look like ahead of time. So I'm going to start with my top, my bottom pumpkin. And the bottom pumpkin is going to be the tall one. And you just want a piece of masking tape. That's all it takes. Now when you're tracing it, you don't want to do the stem. You're just going to trace the pumpkin part because they're going to stack up. And you get your pencil. And I'm just going to copy the outline of the pumpkin. Now if you're doing this on white, you don't need to push too hard. But if you're doing it on wood, you might want to push a little hard. Just because it's a little bit harder to see the transfer. There we go. Okay, can you see my pumpkin? All right, next, I'm gonna do a small pumpkin. Now I'm gonna use this small pumpkin for my next two. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace this one the size that it is, and the next one I'm gonna bring it the lines in a little bit and make it go a little bit smaller. So I want it to sit on top of the pumpkin that I already made. get my transfer paper and do the same thing that I just did. And again, you don't want to trace the stem because we're stacking these. Check. That looks good. All right. I'm going to go up one more. This one I'm going to make a little bit smaller on the edges. That way they look like pumpkins that get smaller and smaller, stacked up. Now you're going for a rustic, kind of imperfect look, so it's not necessary to be perfect here. All right, oh, I forgot the stem. So the top one, you need to do the stem, which I can freehand a stem. I mean, it's not that difficult. I can do that. Okay, so I have my outline done. I got my pumpkins. Now what I'm going to do is paint them now. So I like to start with a darker color at the bottom and then go lighter like this one. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the blue and the grayish blue then the white. I'm going to, for the blue, I'm going to be using a Waverly chalk paint in the crystal color. Oh, I forgot to get a uh, paintbrush. Let me grab a paintbrush. Oh, I forgot 
lot of steps. So before I paint the pumpkins, I wanna lightly outline them with my black. I'm gonna use my black oil-based Sharpie paint pen. And I'm just going to outline the pumpkins that I've already done. So you see right here where these two pumpkins overlap, you want to make sure to have the one that sits on top, you're going to trace that part and not the bottom part. Waverly chalk paint and crystal and I'm just going to paint the insides. It's okay if you go over the black. That's perfectly fine. You do not have a steady hand to do this. You just want to kind of, you know, like in kindergarten, stay inside the lines. gray. I just have this gray paint from the craft section. It's called Granite Gray. I'm actually going to use the same paintbrush because it's okay if the colors mix together a little. And I'm actually going to go over this with a little bit of white. I like to kind of Blend the colors that I'm mixing together a little bit because then that gives it a more unified look. And I decided to go with this color scheme and not a fall color scheme because I'm really liking what's happening right now where they're using these blues and whites and grays to decorate for the holidays instead of the traditional colors of fall or colors of Christmas. I really like that look. Of course, if anybody wanted to do the traditional colors, there's no reason why they can't. You just change up the color scheme. And if you didn't have a nail gun, you could definitely do this piece without the top and the bottom. And you could just use this board. You can even do this in a picture frame and then put a piece of wood in it. Okay, so for my white, I'm gonna use Rust-Oleum, the white paint. I am gonna get a different paintbrush because I don't wanna contaminate that. I don't want to contaminate my white paint with a different color. Oh, I went outside the lines. If you go outside the lines, just make it work for you. Just try not to go too far out the lines. It'll be hard to fix that. I'm a very messy painter. If you can't tell, but it's okay. That's why I like the rustic imperfect look so it just adds character <laughs> the messiness if you find an old piece it's gonna have paint lines and brush marks and all that it's gonna have character it's not gonna look perfect and I think that's why people buy my pieces because they they want that character 
if they wanted it to look perfect, they could go, you know, ride to Kirkland's or Hobby Lobby and buy something over there. So I use chalk paint if I have it around, but I didn't have gray chalk paint. And so I just use some craft paint from Walmart. It's like 50 cents. I have a whole container of that stuff. So I definitely use those colors when I need them because I'll, I'll still get the same effect that I don't want. Okay, I'm gonna wipe a little bit off my brush. And then I'm going to kind of add some white in here. I'm going to go back with this and just kind of blend it in. And that gives it a nice little effect. bottom to kind of create a little bit of a shadow effect. I want to need to do the stem. I'm going to do the stem in gray. And then I'm going to add a little bit of my white. what y'all think so you can see it looks a little messy right now but I'm gonna show you what happens and you see how nice it looks when you kind of blend the colors together a little bit okay now I want to age my wood a little bit more so I'm gonna take my little concoction you can see how I make this if you look up my video how to turn new wood, make new wood look old. You can see how I make this mixture. So I just wanna make it a little bit darker and I'll probably add a little bit to uh, the pumpkins as well. Mm. I'm just gonna dip my brush in and I'm just gonna go over the wood the wood parts to begin with. And it's just gonna darken it and make it look a little more aged. a little bit just to my white just to darken the white a little bit and give it even a more aged effect okay so now I'm going to add a little bit just to the bottom of my pumpkins and it's gonna act kind of like a little shadow at the bottom and then I'm going to take my hand and just kind of blend it in. I'm going to wipe some off the white because I feel like it definitely went into the white a lot. It's probably best to let your paint dry before you do this but you know I'm trying to make a video here. this part is done the next thing is to let it dry completely and then I'm going to lightly sand the inside of the pumpkins to give it a distressed look and I'll show you 
on this one. You see, I just kind of distressed it. And then we're gonna add the gold to the edges. I'm really liking the stacked pumpkins. I'm gonna do some more of those. And I like it, I think I distressed this one a little too much. I like it a little less distressed. Like I have this one and I kind of blended the colors so they come through really cool when you distress it. And I have these two little pumpkins that I did too. So this is the first one I'm doing on the wood background. The other ones I did all on white. But I think this is gonna look good too. I am liking this, very pretty. All right, we're gonna let it dry and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, this is pieces dry and I've lightly sanded it and distressed it with my orbital sander. You can sand it by hand if you don't have an orbital sander, but if you're gonna be doing projects, I highly recommend you get an orbital sander because it just makes everything go so much faster. It's gonna be about 30 seconds to distress this piece. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some gold to the outline of the pumpkins. You can get this paint pen at Walmart it's gold. I love the way it looks. Now it has a little bit of a smell to it, but it gives it a nice bright gold, almost like a gold foil look. And I actually need some more because I'm almost out. I need to put that on my Walmart shopping list. So you're just going to kind of outline it just like you're sketching. It doesn't, you don't want to make it perfect. You just kind of want to brush it and you don't want to cover up the black all the way either because that's going to, you know, give it a layered effect where you have it outlined in black and then you have it outlined in gold and it's okay if it goes on the wood a little bit or if it goes on the paint. Just pretend like you're an artist and you're just kind of sketching quickly. And you can step back and see where you need more gold kind of hard to take the gold away so you don't want to put it somewhere where you don't want it okay This piece is done. You can see the gold definitely add something to it and I like the black coming through a little bit too. And that's why I do the black, but then I'm okay with painting over it. You just kind of want it showing through in some areas. Now we have to, we do have to put the hanger on. Now, if you don't have a nail gun or a drill bit to drill holes, what you could do if you just do this piece without the top pieces. You can take your piece of string and just use a stapler and staple it to the back. And then you'll have a hanger. So I'm gonna put it through the hole. You just kind of twist it and it goes through. And then I'm gonna tie it in two knots and just pull on it to make sure it doesn't go through. Go. I'm gonna do the other side. If you have trouble, you could use a um, paper clip or the end of scissors or something to kind of help it go through, but usually goes through with no problem for me if I just kind of twist it and push it. And this is just twine that you can get at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, any craft store. So I'm going to cut it because I don't need it to be this long. And you can also just pull it through and tie it at the top, but I like these little knots at the end. I think it gives it a little bit of a fun effect. And I don't like my string to be very long because I don't like when the piece hangs too far from the hanger. 
you know, you don't want a big old, you know, a big old string coming to here and your piece hanging way down here. You want it to kind of be all near each other. I'm just gonna cut the edges a little bit and kind of fray them. And it is done. You see how that gold kind of shimmers? I just love this gold paint pen. It really gives it a nice effect and it looks great on wood. It, it works really, really well. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope y'all are inspired to go and make your own farmhouse fall decor signs.